is good, everyone. The anticipation is mounting. The first top three matchup inside Autzen Stadium. Number two, Ohio State visits third-ranked Oregon Saturday, October 12th. And joining us to break it all down, host of the Locked On Ducks podcast and Locked On College Football, a major player in the Locked On Network, Spencer McLaughlin. Spencer, thanks for rocking with us, man. Hey, it's an honor to be here, and I'm getting ready for mentally for, for what should be a really, really fun football game. I'm not ready mentally yet, but good thing it's not today. That's what I'm talking about. You and me both, man. Okay, so let's start off with just the magnitude of this game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's slightly reduced thanks to our good friend, the 12-team playoff, <laughs> isn't it? Like, this is the biggest game in the history of Austin Stadium, and I've had this odd sense of calm throughout the week knowing that, look, does Oregon want to make a statement here and prove to the Big Ten they can play with the best in the league, prove to the rest of the country that they're a bona fide national title contender? Yes, of course. Those things are absolutely on the line. But the loser of this game doesn't need any help to get into the college football playoff. And I know I sound like old man yelling at Sky, even though I look like young kid learning football for the first time. I just think about how it doesn't mean quite as much. And I don't want to take away from how excited people should be for this football game because it's going to be really, really awesome. But the loser of this game is not in a bad position. I, I think the loser of this game could still be ranked inside the top five if if it plays out the way that, that I expect it to. But uh, it could be the most attended Oregon sporting event ever in the history of the state. I think it's the biggest game at Austin Stadium ever. It's the highest ranked matchup of all time. So there, there are plenty of stakes. And there are a lot of things on the line. And I hope Oregon wins the football game. But I, I just can't get that thought out of the back of my mind. Like, huh, if we hadn't expanded the playoff for solely financial reasons for people who, you know, no one ever sees or hears from, <laughs> it'd be a little bit more. But still, it's going to be really, really awesome. Well, that latter part will be a conversation for another day, I'm sure. And don't see it ending anytime soon. So, Spencer, I got to ask you. Home field advantage, does it matter at all in this game? Yeah, oh, of course it does. And, you know, I think Ohio State being favored by about three and a half points, according to various sports books, seems like a little bit much. The, the Buckeyes have been really impressive through the first few weeks, and I, I think there are a lot of people that have the Idaho game stuck in their mind for Oregon, and they've kind of overlooked what they've done the last three weeks, which has been utterly dominant. And at times it kind of feels like they've been playing with their food in the second half because they just have these big leads. Now, that wasn't the case coming out against Oregon State per se, but the Bees couldn't stop them. And then against UCLA, they only threw 10 passes in the second half. And against Michigan State, they were able to put uh, some reserves in by the end of the game. It has been a really good stretch of football for Oregon coming here. And playing in front of their home fans matters a great deal. I, I would not be confident in Oregon's ability to win the game at the same level I am if this were in Columbus, though Oregon's proven they can go to Columbus and, and win as they did a few years ago, the last time that these teams played. But this is a long trip for Ohio State. You know, it'll be a 7.30 kickoff for them uh, compared to what they or compared to their local time back in Ohio. So I, I don't think that matters as much as it's a long trip. Ask Michigan how easy it is to come to the West Coast. No wonder they canceled their home and home with with uh, UCLA a few years ago because here they come to the West Coast and they lose to Washington. So I, I think it's going to be uh, you know a, an advantage to be sure. I don't think it ultimately defines the game because you've got veteran quarterbacks here and, and Will Howard for Ohio State, a guy that has played a lot of college football. He's played in these environments before. I don't think the noise at Otson, which is going to be tremendous, it should be an awesome environment, I don't think he's going to be just insanely rattled by that because he's seen it before. But does it play a factor? Yeah, of course it does. All right, you've set the table, man. What makes Ohio State great? I, it's their defense. You know, I, I think their defense is just so disruptive with the way their defensive front, the guys like JTT and Jack Sawyer, I don't want to butcher JTT's last name on the news. That would be that, That's too much for my ego to handle. But – those guys are, are just capable of taking over a football game. You know, the first time I saw JTT do it was, I think, two years ago against Penn State. And, I mean, he, he's just a disruptor. So you talk about a big test for Oregon's NFL caliber tackles, Johnny Cornelius and Josh Connerly. I, I think that's going to be a really, really important matchup for the Ducks uh, to win or, or to at least hold their own because this is the best front four they've faced this year. The offensive line's much improved from the first couple of weeks. They've made some reshuffling. they found their groove. But now you get to prove that you are the unit that, that a lot of people expected you were going to be coming into the season because this is a front four that's really, really good. So 
I think the Buckeyes' offense with, with Chip Kelly calling the plays uh, has been really good. They've got a phenomenal backfield. Will Howard having the best season of his career. I thought he would coming into this college football year. But it, it's that defense for me that's that's really, really tough. And I love Oregon's defense, too. And it's why I don't think either team's reaching 30 points in this one. Let's talk about the Ducks. I mean, we are in that market. So what are some keys to victory for the Ducks? And who are some of the key players that need to step up in this game? Well, you, you, of course, start with the quarterback. Dylan Gabriel's got to protect the football. Three red zone interceptions inside the five-yard line in his last two games. You can get away with that against UCLA. You can get away with that against Michigan State. You can't get away with that against Ohio State. The, Bu- the Buckeyes are are way too good of a football team. But another guy I'm looking at is Jeffrey Bassa, who got dinged up in the Idaho game, has said he feels like he, he's back to 100%. This is a dynamic, explosive running back room that Ohio State brings to the table with Quinchon Judkins, the Ole Miss transfer, and, and Travion Henderson who was grandfathered in to this Ohio State backfield for for Chip Kelly and former Oregon running backs coach Carlos Lachlan as well. Those two guys make up the best one-two tandem in the entire country. And I, I think that Jeffrey Bossa has shown moments of being his all-conference caliber self, and he's had moments where he doesn't quite look like himself, even when he's been at full strength. So I, I think that he has to have a, a really, really solid game to keep the Ohio State running game Contain. You're not going to hold them under 100 rush yards the way you have uh, against a couple of different opponents this year. But if Oregon cannot slow down the run, it'll be a long day because Chip Kelly will dial up the play action pass. Oregon might have to load the box. That can create one on ones on the outside for this really dynamic and explosive Ohio State receiving core led by their true freshman Jeremiah Smith. The Mecca Book is a veteran. Like, you don't want to be in a situation where you have to leave your corners on an island all the time. But if Ohio State runs the football with a lot of success, Chip Kelly will just keep running the same play over and over and over again until you stop it. I think Oregon fans know that pretty well. So uh, I, I think Jeff Boss and the Oregon linebackers have to be really good. Similar question here, but what is your biggest concern for the Ducks? Oh, man. I, I, think, the, I think it's Dylan Gabriel. And, and look, I, I like Dylan Gabriel. Like the move in the offseason. I thought he was one of the five most highly coveted transfer quarterbacks for – a reason he, he's been exceptional. I, I can brush off the UCLA game and, and say, all right, you know, he threw one, and, and it's not like he played bad the whole game, but he threw a red zone interception. He made a bad decision. Like, okay, nobody's perfect. But for him to then do it again the following week, not once, but twice in the first half, that's where my concern level goes. What are we doing here? Like, like what what's missing? Because it's not as if he's a freshman quarterback making these rookie mistakes. Mm. He's been around college football for quite a long time. So if Dylan Gabriel is able to protect the football, which historically in his career he has done, and I think he gets back to that this week, I think Oregon wins the football game. But you can't give a team like Ohio State that has got a great defense. If you push the ball into the red zone and you come away with zero points, that's that that's doubly impactful against a team of this caliber because you might not drive it down into the red zone, but for one other time in the entire game. I, I think Dan Lanning's got to take the opportunity to kick field goals if they present themselves and you feel good in the kicking game, which I think they should. They hit a 50 yarder last week, which should be enough to give Oregon fans cause to feel like they can win the national championship because that hasn't happened since 2008 hitting a 50 yard field goal. So I I think points are going to be at a little bit more of a premium than the last time these teams played three years ago, which was a 35 28 final score. But yeah, I I feel great about Oregon's defense. I love their skill position. The offensive line is playing well. They're going to get a challenge, but I think they will at least hold their own. And the question will be, does Dylan Gabriel clean up those decisions in the red area? I think I know where you're going with this, Spencer, but finish this statement for me. Ducks win if they do what? Protect the football, stop the run game. Those those are the two things. You, You cannot give Ohio State extra possessions, and you cannot let them get the run game established. One thing I'm really curious to watch in this game from both offensive coordinators is... How much do they involve the quarterback run? Think back to the 2019 Pac-12 championship game. Justin Herbert hadn't run consistently all season. All of a sudden, big game, exceptionally good run defense in Utah, and all of a sudden Justin Herbert's running all over the field. Everyone's looking around going, wait, what? We, we, We haven't seen that this season. And Oregon ends up winning the football game big. We've seen Dylan Gabriel at moments. We've seen Will Howard at moments. 
show their running ability. I wonder if each offensive coordinator doesn't have, at least situationally, a couple of design quarterback runs to get those guys a little bit loose and to just make the defense think just a little bit more, hey, could could he pull the ball out of the running back's belly and keep it for himself? And that creates those running lanes that that both offensive coordinators and head coaches want to create. So I, I think if Oregon protects the football and just contains the running game, I think they win. I've got the Ducks 27-23. Oh, that's a perfect way. You got me flashing back to Justin Herbert in the Rose Bowl running for a touchdown there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I did that as well, both both those games. And that was against a physical, hard-nosed Wisconsin defense that, you know, C.J. Verdell didn't have a massive game against. But why was Oregon able to move the ball? They ran the quarterback a little bit. Clemson in the 2000. 19 Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State. Same sort of thing. All of a sudden, Trevor Lawrence was off and running. We've seen it before. I wonder if that comes into play this week. You touched there on your prediction. Why do you feel that way? Well, I think Oregon's just such a tough team to beat at home. I mean, the only team in the Dan Lanning era to come into Autzen Stadium, and there have been some good ones to roll through, including Chip Kelly's Bruins the last time game day was in town in 2022, or Utah, the eventual Pac-12 champions that season as well, both went down at Autzen, and the Utah game especially was a knockdown, dragout sort of fight. I think this game mirrors that, 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 sort, of, that sort of play style for both of these teams, but only team to go in there and win had three NFL receivers, one of whom was a top-10 pick, and a top 10 pick at quarterback. And Bo Nix had to get hurt or else the Oregon offense, based on what we had seen, probably goes down the field and at least has an opportunity to to win the game with a field goal. So uh, I, I think that Oregon at home has just been such a good team and they've come out prepared. And I, I know the Idaho game lingers in people's minds. Th- th- this Oregon team is not playing at that level. They've shown that. You know, Oregon State was the first step. You know, Boise State, that game continues to look a lot different as the Broncos play really good football week in and week out. But each of the last three weeks, Oregon fans have to feel really good, aside from the Dylan Gabriel interceptions, about what they've seen from this Oregon team in all three phases. And that's why I like Oregon to win this game at home. Nicely done, Spencer. Thank you so much. You got me ready for this game. Excited to see how it plays out. He is Spencer McLaughlin. You can catch his work on the Locked On Ducks podcast and Locked On College Football. Appreciate your time, man. Yeah, anytime. Appreciate it.